What's up, Susie Squad? We back in with some more trolls. And today we've got the new St. Cubes like event. And let me tell you, this is a good event. So, Game Ago, if you guys haven't already caught on, has been asking players a lot of stuff about feedback. And one thing in particular that I caught on to, and I'm sure many of you did, was they ended up having, I think this was a couple months back, but they ended up having kind of a little bit of a survey asking players what they ended up thinking about events and more specifically about the Heckbug event. And of course, myself and a lot of players love the Heckbug event. It's one of the best events in the game right now. And this is very, very similar. I'm very happy to report that it seems like they're actually listening uh, to player feedback and have in fact ended up making an event that is not as good as the Heckbug event. And I'll kind of explain why a little bit later in the video. But generally speaking, this is, this is a good event because it's got a lot of things that you can grind as a free player that are actually very very valuable not necessarily the coolest items in the game but they're very very valuable so before we get started with the uh, uh event itself i gotta let you guys know if you're new to trove you can use that sign up link down in the description and then anything you end up buying out of the cash shop i'll make a percentage of that sale it's an awesome way you can support me by literally just playing the game and buying stuff thanks game and go for the opportunity thanks you find beautiful people for going that extra mile and uh tell your friends because uh because new signups are uh, uh, a lot lower. <laughs> there's less people playing this game every day. Uh, so uh, there's also going to end up being this new store pack, but we'll talk about that in a separate video just because this event is, it's not super complicated, but it's complicated enough that we won't have time for it. Uh, not to mention that this is probably one of the only events in a while where this store pack is completely separate. Like these are no, none of these items can be obtained as a free to play player. It's just a random store pack that coincides with this event. It's kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, they want you to meet Cubeslick in the hub. So this is going to end up being the uh, first part of the event. Uh, and weirdly enough, like it doesn't... Oh, there he is right there. Look at that fan art. He looks adorable. Uh, so he's going to end up being right over here by the big event thing. I don't know. It's kind of weird they didn't go the extra mile of making him anything other than a chair that he's standing in front of because he's not good enough for his chair. Or is he too good for the chair? Uh, so that's going to be this idiot right here. Uh, and then you oddly enough uh, for a lot of these uh, parts of the quest you actually don't get a reward so I'll only mention it when it's uh, necessary but anyways next part is to collect St. Cubes Licks 7 Spice so he's going to end up having a fourth item right here I already bought out his entire inventory and the weird thing is that he literally says I've got enough of this resource to get you covered uh, otherwise go to the treasure isles he does not have enough of the resource to get you covered I feel like the devs ended up making a bit of a mistake there uh, I don't know but either way you buy out his entire inventory and the quest is still going to pertain in the top right asking you collect a little more uh so anyways you gotta end up collecting 25 of the uh, uh of the spice now i've done rigorous testing i ended up actually doing a live stream of me doing this event which maybe i'll make that uh live stream public tomorrow if i don't get busy doing other things or putting other videos up but anyways uh, don't go into the ocean biome as you would expect. Instead, uh, if you can, go to U6 or even U7, just because of the way that the world is going to generate, uh, you know, with every biome in the game. And generally speaking, is going to end up having better ocean generation. So you can see just on top of us, you see that ocean biome right there that has the... Um, the, sh the ship wheel i i'm not a captain of a ship so i don't know what that's called uh but literally that is going to be the biome that you're going for specifically so even if you end up going into the ocean biome and stuff like that the you know while most of the biomes are going to end up having a water variant in this world you're still only going to end up getting this new event item out of the treasure isles specifically okay uh, it doesn't seem to drop from elite mobs, so that's like, you know, things like this guy right here where it's kind of a mini boss and stuff. Uh, it literally just spawns from dungeon chests. So you'll destroy the dungeon boss and then you destroy the chest and then once you've destroyed the chest, that's, get away from me, that's when you'll end up actually getting uh, the item. So anyways, you keep doing that until you end up gaining a total of 25 of the 7 spice uh, and then you're going to end up gaining 15 dragon coins. Uh, and then up next, he wants you to collect washed tater tots or totter tates i don't know why they reverse it um so 
these are an item whoopsie daisy i should be in the hub these are an item that is earned from gardening 2.0 and i i call it gardening 2.0 because there was gardening way back in the day and gardening 2.0 was an update afterwards that nobody asked for where they were like hey you know what let's overhaul the gardening and make it really boring um so anyways the tater tots <laughs> oddly enough he he mentions that you can buy them on the market uh but nope they're all sold out <laughs> Probably because this scam artist is selling them for 10,000 flux each. I mean, why would I buy these when I could buy a Trove of Wonder? I bought them from him anyway. Uh, or you can end up just getting them yourselves through the gardening, which I have other videos that focus on the gardening uh, just because it's overly complex. I don't know how many tutorials I ended up having to reshoot on the gardening just to try and make sense of it all because it's overly complicated and it's just, it's kind of such a, it's a really garbage system. So if you can, honestly, I would just grind the flux to end up buying them out of him, but I'm pretty lazy in that regard. So it's not super difficult to get the tater tots, but anyways, um, you end up getting the tater tot resource and then you can end up washing them at the sink right here. Uh, so there's the tater tots themselves. They toss some glim and some flux to wash them anyways. Oh, excuse me. Or you can just buy the washed ones from him outright, which yikes. Uh, so anyways, you get 10 of those and then you can end up, uh, then you'll end up getting 15 Baum Brilliance, which is pretty darn good. Uh, and then he wants you to craft St. Cube's Licked Delight, which is a food item crafted at this little mini bake oven right here. Uh, so that's going to end up being this item right here, which gives you seven magic find you wouldn't think is that big of a deal. However, it's a special event food that has special properties. This is going to end up uh, once eaten allows you to see the otherwise invisible luck beast that is in Jurassic Jungle. Can you please just stay on my screen? You stupid game disappears at the end of the St. Cube's Lick event. So don't bother hoarding them for months on end because once the event's gone they're gone uh the decaying will start from one in the stack at 15 minutes it basically lasts 15 minutes once you've eaten it and it's on your food hot bar that's when it starts decaying you can put them all in your inventory and stock up a bunch of them if you don't have 15 minutes or time to end up doing it but uh, i'd recommend that you save these resources after this part of the event because uh, this part of the event wants you to just craft this food item uh, and then we'll explain a little bit more as we move on uh, so then he wants you to obtain a luck beast hunch uh, so that is going to end up being a it's not a, it's a food item it's meat uh, so in the flux inventory you can see we got the seven spice right here but the luck beast haunch as well now the haunch is just going to end up being kind of a rarer rarish drop it's uncommon let's say uh from the luck beast and the luck beast looks like this a weird rainbow t-rex there's another variant of this creature but we'll talk about that a little bit later uh so whether you're fighting this one or the variant of it uh they can all end up dropping the luck beast haunch uh, and all you gotta do is just get one of them and then you will complete that part of the quest and you'll end up getting 25 crystalline core again a really really good reward my god uh and then he wants you to craft the feast item which is going to end up being this right here so you can see it gives us 77 magic find but the difference being is that the resources are going to be almost double so uh 25 of the seven spice uh, or 50 of the seven spice and 10 of the tater tots versus 30 of the tater tots but it also costs the luck beast hunch the thing is that these it's so much more worth it for efficiency to end up getting this because you're not doubling your time you're not tripling your time you're like you're you're getting two hours uh of grind time uh with this food item versus the uh, initial 15 of the crappier resource so grab these while you can okay uh and then once you end up uh crafting that item he's got the last part which is collect one of the luck beasts treasures uh so that's going to end up being basically the rare drop off of the normal uh, uh normal luck beast or the variant which we'll talk about in a moment just because once you end up completing that part you'll end up gain a builder's superior focus and then that's going to be pretty much it for the event you can continuously grind the resources to end up making these items uh the thing that kind of sucks is the tater tots are just out so you're going to be spending a lot of flux buying them from him or a lot of time waiting to get them through gardening generally though if you are into the gardening this is a really really good way to make flux right now is just sell your tater tots because you're going to be able to sell them for well 
close to 10k that's for sure i would assume that you'd want to buy them for cheaper uh than the than this idiot but generally speaking people on trove are crazy so you could probably charge like 20k and people would still buy it just for the sake that oh i could just buy it right here instead of right here for cheaper like i don't know uh but anyways stock up on this item and you'll wander around and you kill the luck beast right so uh out of the two hours that i had to get this i was able to get uh uh the the more common of the rare drops but i didn't get any of the rarer rarer drops which we'll we'll talk about those uh, i guess right now uh so the two variants of the luck beast there's gonna be the normal one that i ended up showing which is this rainbow idiot uh and he's going to be able to drop the luck beast ally which is this little ally right here uh, oddly enough these are going to be the untradeable variants of these items uh, and unfortunately you can't loot collect them or anything I, I mean i guess hold on to them in the odd chance that they end up patching it so that we can loot collect them because it seems like an oversight because otherwise your inventory is just going to be clogged with these guys while you're farming you can delete them but i mean why would you want to do that Kind of like throwing this little thing in a trash compactor you know what are you a monster uh so this ally right here you're gonna want it you're not gonna want to miss out on this not because of the mastery not because it looks adorable and is a weird rainbow raptor thing but because it's actually the most magic find out of any ally in the entire game which is crazy 150 magic find and let's not overlook the fact that it gives 10 percent crit hit as well so that's my god I don't know. I mean, I guess because it's, you know, the lucky season because St. Cube's like mm, St. Patrick's Day kind of thing. I mean, whatever. I'll take it. Sure. Uh, and then there's going to end up being this mount. So this is the other thing that you can get. This thing is kind of disgusting. I, I don't really care for this thing. It's a reskin of the tiny T-Rex, which was a free login mount uh, years ago now. Um, but now we've actually got our rainbow variant. And he's got rainbow feet. He's got rainbow belly for belly rubs. I, you know, it's not that I don't like the mount. It's just kind of, I don't know, forgettable to me uh, kind of thing. I don't know. I'm, I like the ally though. Uh, so now let's talk about the rare variant. This is untradeable as well. Both of these different items from the common the common luck beast uh, are untradeable. There's going to be the even rarer flux beast. And that is just going to literally be the exact same thing, but it's just a giant dinosaur made of flux. It looks like this. I don't know. He kind of looks derpy. I love him and hate him at the same time. But uh, basically out of this moron is where you're going to end up getting the super rare items. Or you just won't get anything just because it's so rare. I farmed, let's say, anywhere between 50 and 100 of them within a, a, a two hour time frame. Uh, and I didn't end up getting a single one of its rare ally or mount drops, which is going to end up being these right here. So this is the ally, which does give you 50 mastery, which is cool because the uh, other one. Uh, I guess I should mention uh, the mount in this category gives 50 mastery, but the ally just gives the usual 10 that we've come to expect. Uh, but this ally gives us a full 50, and it's not a very useful ally. It gives three flask capacity, 15% to magic damage, but whatever. I mean, you want it just because of prestige, right? Then there's going to end up being the mount, which is... I actually really like this mount. He looks so derpy and stupid. I like him. Like He looks like... Oh, my name's Jonathan. Do you want cupcakes? I want cupcakes. I want to eat them all. You know, like he just, he looks like an idiot. And I love mounts that look stupid. Like this thing is just adorable, uh, as adorable as it is dumb. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, this thing is extremely rare. And you know, you want to know how rare this thing is? This, this is on PC, of course. These items are so rare that the ally alone is 300k. Uh, end going up and then the mount the cheapest one that we can see is like 2.5 mil this, keep in mind this is while the event is here this is while this is hot this is while you can obtain these items and they are in mass supply they are this expensive which means that they're only going to increase in value as the event ends up going away now the thing is these aren't necessarily as cool as the uh you know the hellbug monarch or the heckbug monarch from the heckbug event obviously that one is going to end up being like a dreadnought reskin and it's really big so everybody wants it uh whereas this one you know kind of just falls into the pile of more trove mounts you know 
but generally I still think you're you're gonna get a good investment out of it if you just want to end up flipping it or if you just want to get a bunch of them and save them for later I mean at the same time everybody wants them right now so it might be better to just sell them right now but anyways uh, a couple tricks that I can give you guys for farming these uh, is that when you are in the Jurassic uh, area like you have to have the food item uh, you know equipped to your hotbar equipped to your character in order to end up seeing these enemies uh, They will disappear if the food item uh, expires with them right in your face So I'd recommend using a ranged character or just using a speedy character in general I mean, I just use shadow hunter just because I'm pretty lazy and you know It's just a laid-back fun time, right? But the thing is you're gonna end up seeing them around the area uh, and you're gonna see a lot of people kind of go off in one direction like out into the wilderness You don't got to do that You could literally just go in circles in this one area because they're gonna end up respawning Thank goodness they ended up making this the same as the heck bug event So you can go to one spot kill one of them move away And then by the time you end up killing a bunch of other things and then come back over to here It should have respawned and it's gonna be the same variant so if you find a spot that has the flux version of one of them you can end up coming back and chances are it's going to end up being another flux version of them so you know do with that information what you will uh, another really important thing that i gotta let you guys know about is that if you end up consuming a food item and it's on your hot bar right like it's sitting here in the food category at any point if you consume any other piece of food, it's going to delete what is currently on your hotbar and then just put a new fo food item on top of it. So be very, very careful if you just like, I'd, I'd hate for somebody to want, be curious and put like the two hour item on their hotbar and then end up using some other food item and deleting it and then wasting their time. Because the thing that kind of sucks is that while the resources in order to end up crafting these food items are kind of, you know, you can just go to treasure aisles and grind them over and over or go through the gardening and stuff this is as i mentioned earlier the part of the event that i feel kind of holds it back uh, i mean thank god there's nothing related to the delves with this event but the fact of the matter is that it's going to take you quite a while to stock up on the resources in the first place in order to be able to get the food item to be able to hunt the lux beast in the first place as well and then on top of that if you want to actually have any of the tradable item which is going to give you a profit because most of all you're just going to get a bunch of the untradable ones you're going to have to grind like crazy to find the flux variant of the beast and then it has to drop the item in the first place so it's is a very very grindy event and not my favorite type of grindy event like i i personally wish that it didn't require the food item or even if it did require the food item it was a lot easier to obtain or maybe even just make the food item tradable maybe it is come to think of it i don't know but the fact is that i really would like it uh if you could just focus on grinding the creature instead of the preliminary to get to the creature you know what i mean that's my two cents towards it but again Thank God the Delves aren't involved in this quest, and that single-handedly makes this uh, second tier only to the Love Bug event. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it for today. This was a much longer event tutorial than I thought it would be, but I mean, honestly, there was quite a bit to cover considering uh, it's not a super duper complex event, but uh, now I hope you understand what I meant when I said it does require an explanation. Thanks for watching, though, gamers. Really appreciate it. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel and have yourselves a fantastic day. If you want to end up checking out that stream that I had mentioned where I ended up doing the event, you can always end up checking out stuff early on the channel if you end up hitting that join button down below and becoming a member of the channel. There's no real difference between the price tiers. It's just ways to support me kind of thing, uh, but is very much appreciated. Anyways, have a great day. Bye, guys.